Welcome to Tripwire Tech Tuesday. This is our first series in a series of technical webinars to cover some functionalities of the Tripwire Enterprise Solution. My name is Thomas Keck, and I've been at Tripwire roughly five years. I started out in the technical support department, moving up to the managed service department, and then ultimately landing as a system engineer today. And so today we'll be covering getting the right data to the right audience. And if you have any questions during the presentation, put into the WebEx chat and we'll have a Q&A session at the end. A Tripwire Enterprise can collect a magnitude of information. However, once the information is making it to the right hands, then it can easily turn into white noise. Today we are going to cover how to expand your monitoring with Tripwire Enterprise from a simple file system monitoring to be able to deliver specific information to your change management team, compliance, security, or operations team as a few examples. And then we'll also talk about how to consolidate mixed environments into Tripwire Enterprise, and then being able to provide business context across different policies and departments, as well as throw in some tips and tricks as we go through the presentation today. And a few of the stakeholders that we'll cover for different reporting needs are executives, system administrators, and security analysts. And so we're going to go ahead and jump into the solution now. We are going to focus in on the dashboard reporting of Tripwire Enterprise to show how data can be presented to different audiences. The dashboards are a way to shave off the time spent in Tripwire Console as it gives a single destination for actions such as mass promotions, running actions, setting properties, or having to chase down a red dot and node to figure out what changed are a few examples of how the dashboard reporting can shave off some of the time within your instance here. And so we're going to start with the most important Tripwire Enterprise user, the Tripwire Enterprise Admin. And so the Tripwire Enterprise Admin is tasked with making sure that the instance stays in a healthy state. And here's an example dashboard that's tuned for the Tripwire Enterprise Administrator in mind. So this dashboard gives us quick insight to the state of our Tripwire Enterprise instance. At a glance, we can see if we've had any inventory changes. Did anything get added to the environment? Maybe we changed a, the name of a node from IP address to the host name. And then we'll also be able to see at a glance how our tasks are doing. So we can see, make sure that we have all of our check and baseline tasks completing, make sure our report tasks are being sent out, and then any of the built-in maintenance tasks like the archive log messaging and the compact element versions. And then if we have any task that timed out or stopped, we'll also see it reported here so we can troubleshoot and make sure that this task runs successfully next time. And so we can also quickly see different aspects of our environment. So for example, let's say if under our security reports here, we want to see who's logged into our Tripwire Enterprise instance. So we have the security log report that when we run it, it will just give us a good view to make sure that people are logging in, that the timestamps make sense, and this is to be expected here, and we don't have unauthorized traffic to our Tripwire Enterprise instance. And then let's say if we wanted to see what the user access and controls are. So under our user information bucket here, we can then jump in and see what our instance is currently configured to. So if we wanted to validate that the administrator role has a certain set of permissions, or if we are locking down things in a way that are to be expected and we're not going to have any issue of people being able to get the, the data that they need out of Tripwire Enterprise. And then let's say if we wanted to take a quick peek at our node health. So we have our node inventory reports, but now we can go ahead and see what nodes we have with applicable health errors. So when we run this, it will then give us a quick list and know what servers that we go ahead and need to troubleshoot today to make sure that these are up and running. And then we can also see any alerts within our environment. So if we wanted to see what has been discovered over the, the last couple of months, just to make sure that servers are registering that it would be expected. And then if we have any node health issues, we can also get an alert here as well. So now it looks like one of my servers I need to troubleshoot why it can't be contacted, and maybe some issues with the event generator here because it's having issues harvesting the odd events. And so now we're going to go ahead and move into a change management view. So say if you are in charge of reconciling changes to a ticket, Tripwire Enterprise provides a way to quickly review and promote the changes. And this is a 
example dashboard that's looking at a, a few different environments. So we have our whole corporate environment as well as our Java application and then our MySQL database. So starting with the corporate environment, we can see a quick view of all the authorized and unauthorized changes within our environment. And this is a good example of how our data can be sliced and diced to match your organization's internal structure. So whether you organize your servers by your environment, your application, your server platform, and maybe even a mix of all of the above, Tripwire Enterprise can create custom dashboards that can be as broad or as granular as you need. And so that's what we're looking at here. So let's go ahead and take a quick peek into our corporate environment here to see what authorized and unauthorized changes that we have coming across the wire. So when we drill down into this report, it gives us a granular view of being able to see how many changes that we have in our environment. So out of 86 total changes, we have 57 authorized changes. So this can be automatically categorized in a variety of different methods. And so you can do things like use a reference server. So if you use a QA or a test environment, push changes out before they hit production. We can then reference that environment and say that, hey, we already saw this change in pre-production. Let's go ahead and automatically promote the same change in production up to the baseline or the good known state. And then we can also use, say, a specific user or service account. So if you're using something like Puppet or Chef to push changes out to, we can then say, hey, this change was caused by the service account for Puppet. Let's go ahead and promote the change up to the baseline or good known state. Or you can use a specific time window. Say if you have a maintenance window every third Friday from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m., we can tie into the time range and say this is an authorized change as well as being able to nest the logic together. So for example, if you have a, a maintenance window where you're using a Puppet Surface account to push changes out to, we can tie into both of those and say, this is in the right time window, it's the right user, let's go ahead and promote it. Or you can just do a good old manual promotion, and then it will change the graph from red to green. And then now once you've eliminated all the reds, you know that you only have authorized changes within your environment. We can also see the change rate of how things are changing. So this is where you can make sure that you don't have a abnormal spike in changes. Like you come in in the morning and you see that there's a thousand changes to the corporate environment. Maybe that's a patch or maybe you have to go in and figure out what happened. Like there's software that was installed that shouldn't. And now let's go ahead and take a, a peek about how we can actually split this data out to unique applications like Java and Microsoft SQL database in this case here, excuse me, MySQL database. And so I, I really want to know what happened on the Java application. So Java is one of my applications. So I can see that we had a spike, about 1,500 changes occur. So I want to drill down into these changes and see what happened for my Java application. So now we can see that we have a little bit over 1,800 unauthorized changes. So I want to find out what these are. So when we drill down into this report, now this will give me a granular view of each of the files that were either added, modified, or removed from the system. And so at this point, I can tell that my application was just updated to the Java 8 update 121. And so this is a approved change. And so I can go ahead and I use this specific view to go ahead and change it into more of an operational type view. And then we can do things like mass promotions here. And so, for example, if I want to go ahead and promote everything, because I know this is a authorized change, this is just a Java update, it's to be expected to make sure that we stay up to date. So I can either pick specific changes that I want to promote, or a little tidbit here is if you don't have anything selected, we can go ahead and then just hit promote, and it will promote everything in this view. So even if there's 13 pages, 15, 20, we'll be able to promote everything all at once instead of having to go page by page to select all of them. And we can also do a few other actions here, such as if there's any sort of action that we want to go ahead and run here. So whether this is like an email word running an action, if you want to kick out a syslog, you can run action directly from here, or you can have the action be set up on the task, and so it will automatically kick off when we detect a change. And then once we've promoted these changes here, it'll also turn from red to green on that report, and now we know that our instance is back in an approved and healthy state. 
And so let's go ahead and take a closer look at our MySQL changes as well. So this is the, the database administrator going in, seeing, well, I want to take a peek here and find out what specifically changed. So we can see the high level of, out of all of our database nodes, we see that just one changed here. And then if we wanted to go ahead and take a quick look, we can drill down into this report, get an idea of the particular server that changed. Or if we want to go ahead and see the specific change itself, we can go ahead and drill down into the unauthorized changes like we saw with the Java application here. And so when we look at this report now, we can see that the MySQL executable was modified, as well as there's one that's now called old. So this is a little bit worrisome that only this executable changed. So I want to go ahead and look in to our ticketing system, see if there's a ticket. If there's not, I'm going to go ahead and shoot this over to the system administrator to take a closer look at these changes. Okay, so now we're going to move into how might a system administrator leverage the Tripwire Enterprise information here. So, so far we've looked at the TE administrator looking at data that's unique to the Tripwire Enterprise instance, as well as the change management that can be scoped to a whole infrastructure or down to just a specific application. And now on the system administrator side, or maybe our operations team, this is some of the data that we can use just to make sure that everything is business as usual on our servers and nothing is going to impact a critical production application. So some of the changes that we may be interested in from a system administrator viewpoint is we can track all the changes that we made to the, the local administrator or the root account. So we can make sure that all the changes that are coming in are what we expect them to be and no one's logging in and making any change that requires root permission that we're not aware of. So if we wanted to quickly take a look and see what administrative changes have occurred, we can then see, based upon each day, how many occurred. Was it a file that was added, removed, and modified? But I want to go ahead and just take a quick peek at the total of all the changes here. And we can see that on our Alderaan server, there was a user added to the system, and it was made by an admin user, so that's why it popped up here. And then we can also see that there was a change to the host file on one of our Windows systems here. And so now we can also take a look at all the changes on our virtual infrastructure. So this is going to be if you use like a, a VMware virtualized environment storing the information in vCenter. And then we can take a look at any changes that have occurred to our virtual machine infrastructure. So if anyone adds a virtual machine, anyone deletes a virtual machine, or even someone goes and adds a network adapter, we'll be able to see that change within your environment. So let's go ahead and take a look to see what server that we have changed here. So when we drill down into this report, again, we'll be able to see the server that we're looking at. So in this case, our Empire server has a change to the virtual machine configuration. And then when we get down into it, we can see that it was a hardware configuration change. And then finally, we can see that the memory was dropped from 12 gig to 2 gig. So if this was a production application, we could very well start seeing performance issues because it may not have the resources that it needs to function. And then outside of our out-of-the-box content on the customer portal, you can also define any custom policies for anything that you want to see within your environment. So a couple examples here are a system administrator may be interested to see if any share permissions change or if they're not adhering to what you'd expect the shares to be set up to, or maybe even a Windows certificate policy where you want to see if any of your certificates are expiring. So if we want to take a quick peek here and just make sure that we have nothing that's going to expire within 30 days, we can go just validate everything's passing, but we have one failure here. And then we can drill down into the failure and see the information on the specific cert that is about to expire. And Tripwire Enterprise can also be used in cloud environments such as Azure and AWS. So if you have a cloud initiative, don't hesitate to reach out to your account representative and we can set up a discussion about how we can best protect your cloud assets. So, so far we've covered how to get the right, the right data to the Tripwire Enterprise Administrator, the change management team, and operations. So next up we're going to take a look at, at changes in the context of security. 
Our most successful clients take a proactive approach to security, and Tripwire Enterprise can be used to look at common indicators of compromise. And so this is free content available on the customer portal, and we can quickly see if there's any indicators such as new software being installed, maybe a local user getting added, a scheduled task or a startup task changed. And so this is where we can then quickly dive into these changes that could be related to someone trying to sneak into our systems. And so let's go ahead and take a, a quick peek on some of these changes so we can see that on our local users here, we have a couple of changes. And then one of our changes is on our Alderaan server. So let's go ahead and take a quick peek. So again, when we dive in from the high level down to the low level, we can see that it was a change to the Etsy password file, adding someone to the system here. And this is also a change that we saw previously on a report for a different audience as well. So different audiences may use the same data in a different way. And then let's also go ahead and take a look at some of the new executables as well. So we can see that we have five servers where we've detected a new executable. And I want to go ahead and take a quick look at our a TLC server here. And then now we can go ahead and see that we have a bunch of executables added to the system. And then this one is a little bit worrisome because it's looking like someone added a Microsoft or MySQL change and then put the fake extension here. So I can go ahead and drill down into this, take a closer look, maybe kick out an email from here to the database administrative owner or the DB owner here. And then all the other ones seem to be related to that Java update to 121. So I know these are fine here, but another example of having the same data, take a look at from the change management side to make sure that this is a authorized change, as well as the security side to make sure that these executables should be on the system. And so the security team may also want to integrate Tripwire Enterprise into a threat intelligence solution, such as Palo Alto Wildfire, Cisco Threat Grid, or even a local database that can store hash information so you can analyze detected changes and flag any elements that either get reported as malicious or match a hash in the local database. And so we can see here that we have a couple changes that were categorized as malicious. So if we take a look at these changes, we can then see that this is a double extension file, so how to get huge raise.pdf.exe. So again, we can go ahead and email it out from here to make sure that this is a legitimate file. And then Tripwire Enterprise can also integrate into our IP360 solution, which is vulnerability management. So the data that we collect for vulnerability management can then be integrated into the change data. So now we can get information in context of, tell us changes on our most vulnerable servers, or maybe even let's check for changes on a, vulner a highly vulnerable server four times a day rather than twice a day. Or we can see changes that are unique to a specific vulnerability. So if you want to make sure that no one is adding files to a system that's vulnerable to shell shock, you can definitely do that. And the same with applications. So any discovered application can be sent over to Tripwire Enterprise. So then you can use the vulnerability management to discover, tag the servers within Tripwire Enterprise, and now you can have application check tasks set up based upon the discovery information. So we're going to go ahead and finish up by going over how Tripwire Enterprise can help the compliance team stay on top of any hardening requirements or regulatory frameworks. An executive may be able to uh, get information as the environment as a whole. So if they want just a, a quick peek to see how the, the PCI historical data is doing, they would be able to see well, here's what we were a couple months ago. We were at 25%. We're at 75% now. So you can track the historical information to see how you're doing over a period of time just to make sure that you're hitting any applicable KPIs as well. And so if you see a giant dip in the compliance, you may be wondering, hey, what happened here and how can we prevent it in the future from happening again? And then as you can see, you can have a dashboard set up that shows either just a segment of your environment or you can see the historical information for a different 
pieces all on this one dashboard. So in this case, we have our PCI environment here as well as our CIS environment because they're not in scope for PCI, but we still want to harden them to a general security framework. And then we also have a CIS policy for Docker containers as well for the Docker host. So if that is something that is of interest to you, you can go grab that today on our customer portal. But now, let's say if you're part of the compliance team that's actually in charge of the remediation. So now we can switch into more of a granular view. And so instead of seeing the high-level trending of where we were before, where are we going, we can see exactly what our current state is at a high level. We'll see, well, our Ubuntu environment is about a 60% passing. And then we can see that our Docker environment, our Docker host is running about 80% compliant to CIS here. But then we can also then drill down into the specific results. So if we wanted to go from the high level down into the low level, we definitely can. And then this will be able to provide us with remediation instructions to be able to take this server from a failing to a passing state. And this is where we can kick it off either via email, dump it to a CSV, however you want to consume the information within your environment. And then we can also have a wording on this widget here, so you'll be able to see when, say, remediation runs have been completed. So this is where we have the manual remediation, as well as the ability to add in a script to do the automated remediation. So if you're leveraging the automated remediation, you can go ahead and see when the runs have been completed, and then just the details of how many tests were remediated and on what server as well as being able to see any alert of a policy score that's changed. So you can get an idea and make sure that, say, if a policy dropped from 40% to 30, then you can focus in on that server to figure out why did our policy score drop. And then if you're using any waivers or exceptions to justify why a test is currently failing or not applicable to your environment, you'll be able to tell quickly when those waivers are expiring here, as well as generating a report that you can then kick out to, say, a auditor to go ahead and justify your compliance. So what I want to also finish up here is give you an idea of how you can leverage these dashboards outside of just your internal personnel. So all these tabs are role-based access tabs, so you can customize and tune it to make sure that they're only seeing the data that's applicable to their job functions. So you make sure your Linux team isn't seeing information on your Windows environment and vice versa. And then another use of that is actually being able to create a dashboard that is unique to say an auditor. So say you have a ISA or QSA, they want to see, well, how is Tripwire doing? How compliant are we? Well, instead of providing them the reports, you can provide them with a login to a dashboard where they can now go generate the reports that they want, see what the rule is scope to, see what the inventory is for what we're covering, as well as a general compliance overview of being able to see the historic information, how many nodes are passing or failing, and then also where we are currently at as far as the tests go. So to conclude, we have seen how Tripwire Enterprise data can be sent out to different audiences to achieve different goals, whether it is to become compliant, make sure KPIs are being hit, or to protect against compromise, or maybe just making sure that all changes are reconciled to change management process. So thank you for your time today, and now we'll take a few questions. And I see one question coming in the chat. So how easy is it to configure the Tripwire Enterprise reporting and dashboards within the product? So that is pretty simple. So all you have to do is create your report, plug in the, the nodes and maybe the rules that you want to cover, the policy that you want to cover. And so we'll actually have a, a blog posting that has a recording of this presentation. And within that blog post will also be a document of how to go ahead and create the Tripwire Enterprise reporting. Okay, and it looks like we have another question coming in. and a, and so the question is, are we able to get a copy of the dashboards that we've seen here today? And the answer to that is uh, absolutely. So the one caveat I do want to cover is the, the compliance information here. This is scoped to a specific environment. So is the change management of being scoped to specific applications. And then 
the operations is also unique to this specific environment as well. So those three you'll want to go ahead and configure based upon what you specifically want to cover. But the security dashboard, this is a out-of-the-box report pack that you can download on the customer portal with our cybercrime controls. So this is just going to look at those common indicators of compromise. And then we'll also have the Tripwire Administrator dashboard on the blog posting as well. So you can go ahead and import this in and start to get that quick look at your health of Tripwire Enterprise at a glance here. And it looks like that is it for the questions. So thank you all for your time here today. Again, we will get this up on our blog as well with the corresponding blog post so you can share this out and reference back to it. And I hope this was useful and have yourselves all a great rest of your day.